Hey, welcome everybody to our live stream here on Lee Chess and Twitch. Mr. Slowhand gifted tier one subs to Aten and another TV viewer. Thank you for the gift subs. Mr. Slow here on a Monday. Challenge me to seven plus three. No drama today. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's something I'm not really happy about. I can't control everything, though. All right, Mr. Slowhand challenged me to seven plus three, gifting two gift subs. Very well, seven plus three. Pretty good games yesterday. I was lucky in a couple of games, but um, really only the second time I can remember where I was undefeated. We actually didn't have anybody drop out in another interesting another interesting turn of events. Alright, Mr. Slow, and I'm gonna go ahead and accept your challenge here, seven plus three. Mr. Slow isn't usually here, but for the Simos on Sunday. The back injury. The yellow sheet. Wait, what's the yellow sheet? What did you say you did to injure yourself? I don't think I can take the Kings Indian today. Let's play E4. Kings Indian is too hard. Oh, an ill description for workplace. I get it. I get it, I get it. What would you what we call that? Note from the doctor, or whatever, I don't know. Um, what do we call it in English when you have the day off because of work-related illness? All right. <clears throat> Let's try something serious here. I was expecting C5 for some reason. I had seen some recent recent games of that. Last time you played C5, was it? No, maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. No, I had a game with you, right? It was with you. Didn't you play C5 last time? A oh, Rossador, welcome. Quiet variation here with bishop d3. I don't know what I'm doing. I know this is a line. Yeah, but I'm wondering, like... Yeah, I saw a game with c5 immediately. There's a variation here with c5 immediately. And for some reason, like, taking on c5 is gaining traction, um, theoretically. We're just going to transpose now back to a normal line. It's also possible to play 9 gf 3 Corch, Noink, Gambit. But I'm not really that knowledgeable in E4 theory. Queen B6 right away. I, bet the, I mean, the move looks wrong. It feels wrong to develop the queen early. Strange noise outside. There's a huge construction project across the main street, very close to where I live in the in the city park. They're building like a giant museum. So sometimes there's some pretty crazy construction sounds here. F6. 
Right, so knight f4 is a line in a lot of positions like this, but I don't recall. So this queen here, I mean, I'm skeptical of the queen placement on b6. c7 is a usual square. Although I think that's also kind of artificial. I would think the best line for black would be where you don't move the queen at all and just play like bishop d6 straight up. There was a game in my IM tournament in one of these classical Frenches, but a different line. I guess it was queen, queen c7, actually. Yeah, I remember now. It was a queen c7, not queen b6, and white played g3. Welcome, Sheber Spieler. And Xerox. So Sheber Spieler. And Xerox. Lots of strong players here this morning, early. Why is everybody up so early? Oh, and I don't know this variation. Queen b6 seems weird, but it does annoyingly put pressure on d4. That means that I, you know, I might might be able to sacrifice my b2 pawn. It's something else to have to think about. If I move my bishop, can I sacrifice this pawn? Schieber Spieler, Mr. Slowhand, Xerox. We should have a we should have a master tournament or something. Bishop d6. What am I doing? So what's happening with university? Schieberspieler, anything interesting? School? School starting? Has anybody heard anything about like the FIDE World Championship? Anything going on in the chess world? I literally have no idea what you're supposed to do here. I think knight c3 might be a move. It seems kind of wrong, though. Queen b3 looks wrong. What is way supposed to do? Knight f4 maybe? I literally have no idea what I'm supposed to play. Position should be at least equal for white. Mule Skinner's here just subscribed. I'm trying to think of a move. You can sacrifice your beat pawn, but I'm not sure what you get for it. Otherwise, I'm playing like knight f4 or something. I actually don't recall ever playing this line. But I don't really play the Tarash. That's why I'm so clueless here. Help! I don't know what to do. All right. All right. Mr. Sloan's still in, he's still in book, book mode. I don't have the benefit of any knowledge here.
benefit of knowledge. Knowledge is power. Why is B3 bad? It weakens the dark squares. It just weakens my pawns in general. B3 is not a constructive move. It does nothing positive for my position and weakens my pawns. Literally, its only purpose is to not lose a pawn on B2. Generally speaking, you, you don't want to make moves like that unless you have literally no other choice. All right, Mule Skinner, your nine-year-old son. I also have a nine-year-old son. Strange, what a coincidence. The dude's birthday is this week, actually. So he's ahead of your guy. Queen e3. I think I remember this position or something very, very similar. I think we're still in book. Queen e3. Feels familiar. The champ. We have a new champ. Cheaperspieler, how do you know? Oh, you play the French. I was like, how does Schieberspieler know e4? Yeah, I don't like his queen on b6. But I think it's kind of, it's kind of just a sideline. I guess I could put my queen on c1 if you prefer. That looks significantly less active. Now he's back to c7, where it all started. So is e5 the point? Whoa, 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 whoa. what? Knight e2 looks safest. G3 was obviously obviously an option, which is pretty typical in this kind of position. It's a tough call between those two moves. I was honestly a little bit worried about G5. That could get played in one moment. You've got to watch this type of exchange sack, but I don't think it, it's anything special here. He can play it if he wants to. Rook f3, queen f3, knight d2, bishop h7 check. That doesn't work. Yeah, actually, rook f3, queen f3, knight d2 doesn't work. Because of, like, queen h5, probably. Anyway, he doesn't need to do an exchange sacrifice. I thought, like, e5 now. Pretty standard. Does that not work? I guess it doesn't work, because I take twice and play f3. How does that work? Don't listen to the stream. I give out bad advice. But I didn't do it on purpose. What am I missing here? Okay, so we're, we're slightly better at least, but
We're happy for an IQP kind kind of end game. I have an advantage, just very, very small. But I thought he was just busted. 96 is a good move. Oh man, that's frustrating. I thought I was clearly better. He escaped last time. What was that? Yesterday not really escaped. I'm thinking of a different game. I was thinking of my game with 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 Notch Papa. That was a French yesterday too. But we're slightly better here. I mean I like I like the Bishop End game. Mm, yeah. She was feeling like static weaknesses. Playing against them, that is. <laughs> Not having them. Uh oh. Hmm. I have a plan. Well, there's no entry point along the C file. So we got good king. I believe I thought I was winning a piece, and he has queen g5. So disappointing. Completely missed it. I feel like this endgame should be a draw. I mean, we are better. But I'm talking like with, with correct play by by both sides. Capablanca would not lose with black here. Of course there are ways to lose. It's not that easy. Isolated pawn, we have the majority over here, better king. A lot of good players might still lose. now man he had he had an invasion there he had an invasion with rook, rook c2 what about this You should get some counterplay. That was a good maneuver. 
He maneuvered his bishop to e4, but I guess I have to just allow him to exchange it. Bishop f1 doesn't do anything, okay. And now he has this. This was a good move too, rook c7. So I should just exchange rooks or something. It's a draw though. I mean, I think this is a draw. At the end, he missed his rook c2, so now he's worse. Well, apparently I'm even better with rook c1. Alright. But now we're seriously better. I don't even know if this is a win, but rook c2 was, was good. Yeah, good game. What about the opening? Queen b6... Queen b6... Sideline. So where do we leave book? Okay, so bishop f4 is is like the third most common move. It's funny that b3 has a good score. I hate that move. Someone was asking why not b3. Yeah. So what does Stockfish say? My move is best. Bishop f4 is best. I mean, that's the strategic exchange that you want to make in the Tarash with, with dark square bishops. I wasn't sure about, you know, the pawn grab here. And I didn't love this move in c3. It's like moving pieces away from the king side. So, knight f4 is interesting as well. So we're still in book. Bishop f4, I probably looked at this. Queen b2 is the main line. Now, I haven't looked at that, but the position in the game seemed kind of familiar. Castles, queen d2. I've definitely looked at this once, at least. King h8 is the main move. Blazirov. Stonewall Dutch French player. But I decided, like, I guess this was the best. What did you do? 94. So I guess 94 just isn't great. And so g3. I was afraid of g5, though. I didn't know what was going on there. That was actually played in this game. I guess it just weakens black's position. Anyway, good game. Interesting line. Mule Skinner, FM Schieberspieler. Mule Skinner, son of Mule Skinner. It's not actually Mule Skinner. Mule Skinner Jr. All right. And Schieberspieler, pair one, two, three. All right. Five, three, three, seven, plus three. Pair one, two, three. Please re-challenge me to our, to our recommended time patrols. Something between five, three, and seven plus three. I wonder if the son of Mule Skinner plays the Grand Prix attack <laughs> as well. Mule Skinner Jr. Promise not to play the Grand Prix attack like your dad. GG Hillis, welcome. All right, let's try something in honor of Schieberspieler. Schieberspieler, do you prefer the Karo Khan to the French? Exchange variation. So my, my anti-Mule Skinner is actually the Scandinavian. We'll have to try that next time against Mule Skinner Jr. That's funny, Mule Skinner Dynasty. I get it. I get it. It's like Duck Dynasty. Bishop D3. This Verisab has become popular, though it, it's not great. It's easy to learn. You're in quick mode. That wasn't you that I played the other day. You're not Tokahal too. So he's allowing direct bishop e5. Whatever that is. I'm I'm dyslexic. The older I get the more the more dyslexic I get. Especially when I'm like sleepy. I said bishop b5? What? 
After 30 years of playing chess, you think I know what the coordinates on the board are. But I seriously, adult onset. I have adult onset dyslexia. Do you like the Queen Takes D5 in Tarash French? There was a game in my IM tournament where um, Buchok, our teammate from the from the streamer battle, he played this interesting line that Fridman played, where they go Queen D7 instead of instead of Queen D6. Do you know that Schieber Spieler? You can play the Farago Ivan variation of the winner with Castle's King side. Very solid. Oh, you know in the Tarash, Queen takes d5 Tarash, Black retreats the Queen, but to d7, not to d6. It's kind of relatively newer variation in the last years. That was interesting that Butchuk played that in the in the IM tournament against Bodhi Tibor. I'm not sure if anyone, anyone really good has played that with black. I just remember Fridman playing it, I think. It's kind of weird, but what's the point, really? I mean, I guess you can get the bishop fee in Kadot ideally, instead of on d7. Okay, so I forget I'm not playing Mule Skinner here. We're basically playing a Queen's Gambit reversed. I really should play Bishop d6, I suppose. Controlling e5. I don't know why I hesitated. We're we threatening e5. Not really. This is more aggressive though. That's how I would play with white in a Queen's Gambit exchange creation. Instinctively went passive. I thought you were talking about 97 here. <laughs> it's funny when you say something that applies to the current position. With bishop d6, my knight could go to e7. Not a typical idea though. Oh, I see. In that French. Like, who's really good that plays the French? Caruana? Is Fabiano still playing the French? He seemed to be really... Really a big... French player and um, what about like Rajabov does he still play the French he always used to religiously play the French yeah N N Nepo Nepo now the Nepo man did Caruana quit the French I don't even know who's higher rated than who else anymore. Like, if you ask me, I'm still living like three years ago. I don't really follow the chess world that closely with ratings and stuff like that, so. I don't know, for all I know, like, the Pamiachi's higher rated than Caruana now. He's been on such a good streak. White's very solid. But this is part and parcel for the for the Verisov. Now Mule Skinner, this is son of Mule Skinner. Mule Skinner himself is is a very dedicated closed position player. I wonder if that rubs off on his
and his teachings. White's playing really well here. Bishop d4. Nimzovich. Mule Skinner Nimzovich. Gotta like Bishop d4. It's a good square. So the position is equal. You could make an argument that weight is better here, I guess. You can always make an argument. I don't even know which way to recapture in that position. And I feel like I'm playing the French. Hanging pawns. White's played solidly. I actually thought when he played bishop takes f6, instead of bishop takes f6, after bishop takes f6 by me, I thought f4 for white, maybe. Even though it weakens his king side, you could just play f4 directly. Not everybody maybe likes that move. White center, you, you know, like white, so you're the French defense player. You must like black here, Mr. Slow. But I don't think it's that clear, honestly. The hanging pawns are tricky, you know. If you push one, the other one's backward. It's pretty awkward. Maybe I need to think more tactically. Queen C7 is kind of restrained. I could have played Queen B6, gunning for the F2 square. But honestly, it's pretty artificial. Even the pawn on B2 may be not worth taking, because the counterplay along the B file. And I want to focus on development, but I don't really think that black is much better here. I just don't like the structure. I don't like having three pawn islands against two, personally. Though admittedly my pawn structure, my, not my structure, but my, my pawns are well placed. What, what there is of them, what there is of that island is well placed. But it's some high maintenance keeping those hanging pawns protected all the time Mr. Coffee's here good morning friend White has no center he's playing Nimzovich style trade off the center create outposts for your pieces but I don't like that he gave up the e5 Schieberspieler also wanted to play something based on queen d4, which would maintain the center, and I like f4, just keeping control of e5. White is like the tiniest bit worse now, due to lack of center and harmonious black position, but it's still... I mean, I think like with two computers playing this game, it's, it's a draw 98% of the time because neither side has a really significant advantage. Unless I can somehow play like e4 and maneuver a knight to d3. No, if I could get my, my pawn to e4 on knight on d3. But I don't really have a good plan here. 
I'm even wondering if I should have played rook e8, not rook d8 instead. Your holiday? What holiday? It's Labor Day. That's so weird. I can't ever remember American holidays anymore. Let's celebrate the Postmaster General on this Labor Day. Oh, anyway, <clears throat> I don't know what to do. I changed my mind about my rooks. It's kind of like when I played Morales' baby. It may be stronger than Morales himself. The baby just killed me. No, he was he said he was holding the baby when I played him. We've played. We've played him under a different account before, right? Mule Skinner. Now the one thing that could happen is is that, you know, which I like. But other than that, I didn't really see any prospects here. G three. I guess that's it. That's it for Knight H5. Well, White's got a very mature style, honestly. It's hard to believe it's a kid. He must be very well trained. Padre and Tony, you're used to playing kids. Allowing d4 though, tactical oversight. Not. He has queen b3 check. Whoops. Alright, never mind. So that's probably not good. Hmm. Tactical. He's panicking in time pressure. He did a good game. I don't know if it's lost. It looks lost. That is lost. Yeah, that's a shame. My white played very solid the whole game. Probably shouldn't lose. Just time pressure and one preventable tactic. Mule Skinner Jr. plays very well. Yeah, but anybody would have cried from that game, Anthony. Honestly. I would have cried if I had been your opponent as well. You don't have to be a child to cry from losing that game. Mmm, that defends. It's annoying. No, it doesn't. All right, we saw the one move threat. Yeah. So all the way away was fine. And I don't really like the way I played this without a plan. I don't like the way I played this. I guess maybe I shouldn't play f6, I don't know. 
here we have differing opinions about how this should be played. The engine likes C3, wow. I thought F4. And here, she responded, I thought Queen D4. And he's probably right. So there were better plans there. Knight G3 wasn't popular with the with the um, peanut gallery. But I drifted with no plan here. This was probably the beginning of a little bit of a problem for white playing queen c2, creating that, that pin there. But objectively, the position should be equal. All right, good game. Till the end. Sheba Spiller, if you helped him to quit chess, you probably saved his life. I said Sheba Spiller. I meant Antoni. Sorry, guys. Getting you mixed up. You saved him from a life of chess. Possibly the best thing could happen. All right, Sheba Spieler, five plus three. It's funny how, you know, it's funny how little things like change your life. Um, if you think about how I started playing chess, nobody in my family played chess. I had no tradition for chess and I just thought it was kind of like checkers. And just because one of my friend's fathers just randomly taught him to play chess one one summer or whatever, and because that father started losing to his son, I became like the substitute for the for the father. Because this one man taught his son to play chess, I became like a professional chess player later on in life. It's it's weird how, you know. One action of somebody randomly affects your whole life, how it could change your whole life. Shiver Spiller with the London system. All right, so we have some game with Ayesta like this, I think. Wait, what? what's with G3? Are both labeled G3, so it confuses us. Oh, because you guys both play G3 with white? Is that what you're talking about? You're labeled G3. Wait, wait, so how does this go? There was something with Queen A5 and I always get confused. Oh, there was some B5. Well, that was it, B5 takes check rook B8. In my brain, I label you G3. Nah, not at all. So I had, I had a game with Ayeste where I screwed up, and another guy on the Mega Battle a month ago, who was coincidentally Serbian, So I've only faced Serbian players in this variation. There was some line here, like knight e4. It doesn't really make sense though. Knight e4, bishop d2. I guess that was it. Oh, I would guess it's knight e4. Would I go for the pawn? Go for the pawn. I mean, I'm sacrificing a pawn. Grabbing that dark squared bishop and enjoying the benefits therein how about rook b8 what are you going to do about rook b8 why don't you castle queenside rest in peace bishop he loves bishops <laughs> so do I you gotta appreciate you gotta appreciate a player who who loves bishops the Serbian London system yeah well oddly when I looked it up it was a Robert Marcus game with black that was 
maybe the most important game in this iteration that's been played so far. And he's another very, very good Serbian player. But in that case, he's playing black, which makes it interesting. So equal opportunities. Knight e4 looks awfully professional. I mean, knight e4 makes me think I just blunder, you know. So if I had known you were going to play knight e4, I would have played rook b8 now. I guess g6 is some sort of crazy mistake. It would be natural and good, but this knight e4 move, I'm only thinking about knight d1, and he's got knight e4. And now he's got this weird queen c3 stuff. What am I supposed to do? This screws up everything. Everything is ruined. All right, we gotta do do our best. Salancy imitation. Man, this could get ugly. Prepare yourselves. Things could get really weird. I don't want to go into an ending against Schieberspieler down a pawn, do I? Uh, maybe it's not that bad. I was thinking about Queen A4, Queen C3, F6, or something. Horrible like that. Probably it's best. Wow. Wow. I just can't stop saying wow. Dude, that's insane in the membrane. No, actually it's not it's not that bad. He's always got C3. It's not that easy for me to perforate his defenses here. The House of Pain reference. Knight b6, knight a4. There's still no way in. How about f5 at some point? Chess is, is all about friendship and love for Padron and Tony. Camaraderie, friendship, and love. It was all about revenge and destruction. The key to success. I mean, if it wasn't had, if it wasn't for that one random thing, I mean, I would never have even barely learned the moves. I mean, some people pass it on down their family. We need maximum. absolutely maximum pressure f5 is highly debatable but it's possible that anti-positional moves could confuse Schieberspieler who's exceedingly correct in style yeah I guess I should castle before it's too late here I don't want to get pinned with I'm thinking he had bishop b5 check actually we're very, very active here, though. I mean, tactics could, like, overwhelm him. I'm even thinking of a double pawn sack. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 3. And I'd like you to play along and guess how many pawns I'm going to sacrifice. Rook takes, bishop d3. Damn, dude. Black's very, very active here. Although Rook takes Bishop d3, he's getting out quickly. Kill. We gotta do it. Kill, kill. Murder the Schieberspieler position. No prisoners. Sacrificing everything. Slice him. Slice him with dynamic bishops. 
No prisoners. Gotta watch for counter tactics here. I'm not sure that I can take this pawn on d5. Safe move is like h3 maybe for white. No safe moves today. How many pawns did I sacrifice? One, two, three, just four? Okay. Total dynamism. Total chess. Is that it? The end of my the end of my dynamic fun? That's all I've got. It's very disappointing. can't believe it. I've got nothing. He's going to start talking trash now. No, maybe it's not nothing. Let's let's have a little faith. Have a little faith. It's only a three pawn sacrifice. Practically two because age seven is gone anyway. Not a good sign. Oh. Yeah, that move was a disaster. Obviously, I have to take on d3 and take on an h7, and it's not that bad. Still down four pawns. Nah, he's lucky. It's a very lucky dude. Drop my e seven pawn. Damn it. He sees everything.
Oh, I hung my rook. That was getting out of control there a little bit. We we were we were close with something in that game. Even a second chance from the land of the dead, and we, we still had a chance. Might have had something, especially the first time around. It's possible the second time around I wasn't I wasn't winning. He he sort of He let down his guard thinking it was over toward the end there. But we still had some compensation. All right, good game. That was fun. All right, good game. Congratulations. A winner. Solid. I don't know, that's an interesting line. I, I think I want to check the opening again. Rook two, a two, a three equal. I played the wrong rook. I'm thinking here rook b8 instead of g6. Is knight e4 like a brilliancy? There's no games from this position? Really? Are you supposed to take with a knight or something? It is rook b8. No. Well, knight e4 isn't in the horizon of the engine. Why is that? What's wrong with knight e4? It's a trick or something? So I made fun of this Solancy move, but it's actually, I thought, pretty interesting. Like, queen c3, f6. I can actually sack the exchange. This occurred to me, but I didn't see anything here. What's this? Oh, I just take on c2. Huh. Computer thinks that I have compensation here. Yeah, maybe I do. Weird. Takes, takes. So 94 was interesting, but maybe not, not best. Maybe not best. I expected 91. I mean, it looks very solid, but it's not as active. Anyway, all right. Where did we leave book there? Weird. What did I do wrong? Oh, so here? So I keep forgetting this move. I'm supposed to play rook b8. 94 isn't as good. You have queen d3, I guess. I think I blundered this against the other Serbian guy. It's like 92, bishop, one of these things. Yeah, I keep forgetting this move for some reason. It's like a mental block. Play rook b8 here. And then bishop d2. And then rook b2. Maybe if I play through this, I'll actually remember e4. Black has not lost a game yet. But, but it does seem like white is better. All right. Yeah. No, I mean, white has not won a game here in six games. Interesting. Guys, we're taking challenges 5-3 through 7 plus 3. I've got a rated unlimited standard. Um, that's not valid. All right. Morales, we haven't seen in ages. I was talking about the baby. We're playing, we're playing the the children of, of regulars today. Morales, is your baby ready to play yet? It's like two years old, three. Does he know how to play? He or she? All right. Who who'll be happy? Anybody who's a subscriber can play first. Morales, the guy's re challenging me, to rated unlimited. No baby. Alright. So he loves the Grand Prix attack too. Grand Prix attack's been driving me crazy lately. And I hate the close Sicilian in general. So we're going to get that, I guess. We could try something else. But he's good at e4, e5. Morales is especially good at attacking...
Got a good opening repertoire with attacking aggressive systems. Baby Ponda. Knight C3. Yep, I don't have anything better here. Your challenge is not appearing, Rostor. Actually, it's never appeared. There it is now, for the first time. Were you trying to challenge for a while? Because I don't remember ever seeing a Rostor challenge, even though you were like the second person here in the stream. Rostor was really early today. I had some interesting idea the other day. Try something different. I lost this line with white once. Rest in peace. Alexander Butinoy, Romanian international master who passed away. I actually only played this line like maybe in two games or three games with white, I think. Maybe three games. I've played it. Normally they play knight f3 rather than knight e2 after after g6. What's what's the benefit to knight e2? We've also had problems with people appearing and disappearing during the simul registration. Yesterday someone at the last minute realized they had been kicked out of our simul. So there's no difference, okay? I was looking at this last week, briefly, very briefly. Well, I just have to remember what I was looking at. Something interesting. Why can't I remember this at all now? So the main line was like knight h6, knight h6 d3, that's my game with Butenoi, but that's known, you know. Knight h6 d3, d takes c3, bishop takes h6. And Butenoi did something like weird, like queen a5, and his queen goes to a5, and he played like queen f7 check, king d8. And the position was just really weird, and I somehow lost with white. That was like in 2000, 2008, 2009, I can't remember, Tamashvar. But um, I was looking at this. Now I can't remember what the engine said. I'm not sure this has been played before. It, well, you can't trust the opening explorer on Lee Chess. I mean, that's not a complete database. The Lee Chess opening explorer is not, it's not a reliable chess database, but if you don't have time to check somewhere else, it's mostly complete. I didn't see any games where this had been tried before. I was just trying to think of a different way to play with black that was like somewhat new, you know. But now I can't remember what the computer said about this position. I guess relatively equal. We're on our own now. So Rossador, if you're challenging me, I'll take your challenge next. It's your subscriber. So this was definitely, um, Definitely one of the moves. Maybe the main move the engine recommended. I have to take. Now I just can't remember. Cannot remember what what it analyzed after this. I'm like totally 
drawing a blank. I thought it was takes on d2. But after that, we'd have to play bishop takes f6. And I have no clue. I mean, I'm just vaguely following what I recall from the, the stockfish analysis. But maybe we just stopped here. And I guess the position wasn't that interesting that I even paid attention to what, what the computer suggested from this point forward. But I'm up a pawn here. Yeah, we got the ambulances. Not not too much today though. Kind of quiet, just one. Only one ambulance. No, I mean the problem with Lee Chess opening explorer, it's a third party software. They don't create it. Um, I think it's used on other other websites. They sell it to different websites online, whoever they are. But um, it doesn't have a lot of older classic games. It's safe as long as you don't get hit by an ambulance. But at least if you do, you know they'll be able to take you to the hospital quickly. No, man, I mean, I lived in Boston for 15 years, almost. And I never heard ambulances all the time. Maybe American ambulances are just not as loud, or they don't turn on their sirens as frequently. What's your plan on Bishop C3? Figure it out when I get there. Yeah, bishop c3. I guess I could play something like queen b6. Looks like a... Luckily we have a pawn we can give back in emergency. I mean, yeah, we could take and play like castles, but it looks a little dangerous. But objectively that might be good too. But Morales loves to sacrifice material. I wish I had a plan here. You're asking me about plans? You think I have plans? You just realized you're down a pawn. I said that. What's a pawn? I'm thinking it might be worthwhile playing H5. There's another ambulance. Maybe it's just the same one. Continuing its its plan. Continuing the plan. Ambulance plan. Now what? I mean, wait as compensation. You had to give him this idea of c3. Thanks, Schieberspieler, for giving him good ideas. I'm going to freaking run out of time. Safety first. Especially when low on time. I'm always happy to trade queens. <laughs> but he has compensation for the sacrifice pawn. Beyond the shadow of a doubt. But still, it may not be a bad way to go about attempting to equalize. Is king d8 worthwhile? Oh, 
Oh man, he's a genius. He sees everything. Sees everything. It's like the, the eye of Fatima. Man, this is not the baby playing, are you sure? No plan is better than having a bad plan. You heard it first. I'm just kidding around, guys. But not only he's brutal, he's fast too. Bishop d7, I'm dead after that. Clearly. Get your pawn. You don't want you don't want my <laughs> you don't want my pawn. You don't want my pawn. I'm gonna wiggle out of this like an eel. If you don't take that pawn. Eel them. Alright, draw. I should be slightly worse here. But I don't know how white can make progress. Man, plus 1.4? Ouch. You think I was going to wiggle out with, with rook b8? Peter doesn't care. a4, rook b8. g4. Fixing the double pawns. Then b6. h4. Now I have to play this, this. I have a like worse rook in game here. Yeah, this is pretty unpleasant, frankly. But I think the stockfish evaluation as always is slightly exaggerated. In reality it's probably like point eight advantage to white or something. But what did I do wrong? Oh, this actually happened in a game. I don't remember seeing that. Bishop takes d2, bishop f6, castles queen side. And then the player in question here castled. But obviously I'm afraid of h4, h5. I was thinking of playing h5 myself, honestly. But it's too slow. So I played queen b6. Which is like a bad novelty, I guess. Yeah, this this is just an unpleasant end game for me. Wait, I didn't play that, did I? I did that. You had takes on f7. I totally forgot you have this. The Boutinoy trick. Okay, it's a little bit messy. It's not that clear. Anyway, I don't think I've revitalized how to play the black side of that line. Okay, Rossador. I'm taking subscriber challenges before anyone else. <sighs> Didn't revitalize the variation. Castles is a little dangerous. I didn't like Castles H4. I'm trying to, to learn how to play C4 E5 because the symmetrical English is just lame. Let's try something weird. Challenges this morning. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes Monday, 
a lot of people. I'm basically playing the, the B3 Sicilian with colors reversed. B6, Blobix. The reversed Blobix. How bad can it be? The B3 Sicilian is actually, I, I think it's kind of, kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, like, objectively, there must be some, there must be some slight flaws here for black. My ascension? <laughs> what does that mean? Are you... Oh, the Catholicism. Now I understand. It's a miracle. Call the church. You know the weather's good. So Rossidor played G3. Seems like kind of a weird response against B6. That move has to justify B6. But I mean, Rossidor hasn't played the English against me before, so I'm assuming he's learning this. Like, learning the English. And if you're going to play something unusual, it's going to have more effect against the novice English opening player than it would against an experienced one. Maybe Schieberspieler knows how to exploit B6, but if you're in their first six months of learning an opening, I don't think it's that easy to exploit this. Now, interestingly, it it's close to something else. It's close to a C4, B6. We've actually transposed a C4, B6. Knight c3, bishop b7, e4, e5, which I played against the uh, Gombots Ferenc in, in February. Maybe we had this exact line. But not really. Okay, well, he, he might have played g3, in fact. If we could take back g3 and play knight f3, I like that move better. Yeah, this this is this is similar to my game from February. I think I played like bishop c5 or something. But I'm not sure that's the only good plan. Knights before bishops. Why does queen g4 here? If you really want to be experimental. Why likes d5 square? d5 is not a problem. Because I can play c6 anytime I want. d5 is not, it's not a permanent outpost. d4 is a problem for white though. Whereas I can control d5 with a pawn, Heinischberger. White can never control d4 with a pawn. And that's why I like the setup for black. I don't really like e4. Temporary, permanent. If I didn't have a c7 pawn, then obviously d5, like in an open Sicilian, D5 is is really a problem. But this is this is a key resource. If he goes ninety five I could just kick it out. So E4 is is not the best move. Well now he has to play no you know, he doesn't have a lot of choices. G three wasn't a good move in this move order. Maybe knight of three is better than what he did though. It's actually a line in the b3 Sicilian reversed. Knight f3, e4, knight d4. It's even possible to play like e3, but I don't think it's it's very good for, for black. You can trade off your central pawn if you want to, but I don't think that's, that's beneficial. I seriously thought about maybe taking up the, the 2b3 Sicilian because it's not that bad, and, and I think that it leads to original positions. 
and people don't know it super well. I never had it easy of a time playing against it. It's not great, but it's not bad. Now knight f3. Fried liver attack. Well, this is there's some weird lines here. Astro Bay played an awesome game yesterday. He lost, but is Astro Bay here? I wanted to I wanted to congratulate you, Astro Bay, for the maneuver knight b6 knight a8, invoking the late great Emery Tate, who played the same maneuver against me. Triple X clam knight a8 in a Benoni. It was. It was some kind of, also a Benoni. Um, I'm not sure if Tate did the same thing as you. I don't think he played knight b6 in front of his b pawn, but he still needed to play knight a8 at some point. But that is an awesome maneuver. You know, the knight is entirely misplaced. So now Rossador with knight takes e5. Critical. An interesting move. I'm a little skeptical here. There was a fascinating line. Um, my first idea was was like the Frankenstein Dracula variation, Queen F6, but unfortunately he has Knight G4 there. Because I was looking at like queen f6, knight d3, knight b4, <laughs> f4, queen d4, but it's all like kind of bullshit. I think the problem here ought to be that we have something. It's like a Donald Trump interview. On the surface, it seems. It seems plausible when you investigate deeper it doesn't quite add up look at that central fork which fork are you speaking of Pawn fork or a knight fork? Too many pawn moves makes Jack a dull boy. Honestly, I didn't see it to the last minute. My original intention was to play bishop e4, and then after takes, I have bishop takes e4, which is probably pretty unclear. Way that's good control the center there. Maybe Rossador saw that line. But now I'm just up a piece. You gotta get Rossador in the opening while he's vulnerable. He's vulnerable to opening traps. Any other subscribers? JK Linney? I'm not even sure who's a subscriber anymore. I don't keep track. Like, I think there's a feature on... I think there's a feature on, um, on Twitch to, like, download your subscribers, but I don't... I feel like I'm stalking people if I do that. So what did you do? Knight takes e5, Rossador. But objectively, like against Fair and Stonebutts, I think he did something normal like knight e2. 
not knight f3. Once you've played like e4 and g3, you're probably better off just going with that sort of standard formation. Knight e2, you know, the, the knight e2, knight c3, g3, e4, Bakvinik sort of thing. So I had another game with JK Linney a while ago, physically downloading us. There was that option to, to download a list of your subscribers. I've never done that. I'm not that into marketing myself. Bishop G7. Getting old. No, but you are vulnerable to opening traps, Rossador. You need to work on your openings, get it mapped out. Know your, know your weaknesses. Because the rest of your game is pretty good. Actually, it's good if your weakness is the openings, because the openings are the easiest thing to improve. I mean, I think openings and tactics are the two things that are the easiest things to improve. So, if that's where your weakness lies, one of those things, fairly easy to learn or correct. Now it's like a mainline closed Sicilian, though not that common to play with a knight on f3. It's it's reasonable for white. It's kind of boring. Princess chess also plays the closed Sicilian, though typically not this setup. Black plays like this in reverse against the English pretty often. I actually used to play the close Sicilian against the English, like a reverse close Sicilian, years ago. So any reference point I have about the close Sicilian is often from games where I played like with black against the English in the old days. I may go back to playing that though, but I feel like the close Sicilian, it's, it's better as a defense than it is as like an attack, honestly. It is not boring. It's a little slow to develop. You need a whole afternoon to play the closed Sicilian. No, I mean, closed positions for me are, are high maintenance. They require a lot of thought, strategy, planning, maneuvering. It's not just reacting with tactics. It's hard work, and, and I like to avoid hard work. So we save that for the longer games. I have some crazy close positions in my longer games, but then I don't mind, you know? If I have an hour, a couple hours, to really think about the position. So again, this, this is a very standard sort of reverse position. Boris Spassky. Spassky-esque. Thinking is not boring, I agree. Maybe boring was the wrong word. Difficult, strenuous. Positions that are closed are, are strenuous, require a lot of effort and thought. But Astrobate, once again, brilliant, brilliant plan yesterday with 98. I like that. But I want you to realize you played a good game, you didn't sacrifice anything unnecessarily. But I want to make a comment on, um, I'm winning a pawn here. The game yesterday that we played, Astrobate, if you don't play Knight H5 voluntarily, because you enabled me to sack the exchange and take the initiative in so doing, if you hadn't done that, maybe Maybe it would have been very hard for me to decisively attack you, and your attack might have been faster than mine. I haven't looked at it yet. That's pretty much the only game. Interesting here for J.K. Linney is d4. Pretty extreme. But I would consider sacrificing an exchange. Maybe it's a little bit over the top. Rook b1 is, is normal.
the one game in play. 12.30, guys, I have another 30 minutes left in our stream. Is that right? My stream starts at 11 o'clock. But I have to leave early today. To go, I have to go a little early. I just realized to be somewhere at 1.30. For some reason I'm having trouble with, with remembering what time my stream start and end. That's, this is an interesting move. If I take with the pawn, you play bishop b7. My pawn structure is pretty well shot in that position. I think because I used to start my streams at 10 a.m. instead of 11, I have some sort of regression. I guess we take an e5 with the bishop. What else? So guys, we're going to stream for another half an hour here today. We're going to be back tomorrow night. I have to set up the tournament for tomorrow night. Keep in mind. Tuesday Blitz Tournament. Sponsored by Schieberspieler. Promise to buy beer for everyone. It's a good thing it's legal to buy beer here in Hungary. Before you're 21. He wouldn't be able to sponsor our tournament otherwise. I like this. The spirit of J.K. Linney's play here. One, two, it's like, almost like the third. Mubat just, just posted beer. How did Mubat do that? Oh yeah, cheers for masturbate. I thought Mubat was like responding to my voice. Masturbate instigated it. All right. I'm getting materialistic here. JK Linney has sacrificed a third well, it's almost like he sacrificed the same pawn twice or something. It's, it feels like he's sacrificing multiple pawns. He is, in fact, sacrificing multiple pawns. We cannot accuse White of being guilty of materialism. Knight c3, threatening that knight b5, maybe. Interesting. I notice, I think Schieberspieler left. He doesn't know he's sponsoring the stream with beers. I was just kind of teasing him. Russell, what's the drinking age in Ireland? It sounds like a sort of joke. It's 18 as well. They don't have a drinking age. It's a natural pa national pastime. All right, but all jokes aside, same here in Hungary. You're shamed if you don't start drinking by 14. A JK Linney is heading for a mating attack here with like knight, knight e4, knight g5, queen h6. That's not happening. I didn't really realize it was unified, Antony. I was, I just kind of assumed like every country set its own, set its own limit. Um, it's weird like being from the United States where we're really prudish and the, the drinking age is 21. Although, I think when I was a really little kid, not that I know because of, because of that, but 
When I was really little, they changed the drinking age. I think it's different. It must have been when I was like a really little kid. Age four. Well, we don't talk about that. My true age here. Thomas Trenson raiding with a party of 15. I just remember because when I was a little kid, we used to go to restaurants pretty often. And there was like this law that kids couldn't be in the bar of like a restaurant bar. It was always sort of a little bit off putting as a kid. You weren't allowed to like sit at the bar part of a restaurant. So I remember vaguely that kind of stuff when I was little in the United States. The laws are different today. America the prudish. Yeah, I mean, in Italy, they wouldn't understand something like that in the old country. Everybody brings all their kids to the bar. Leaves them there. It's it's similar to a daycare center. Just uh, with alcohol. No, seriously, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tomas Trenson, thank you. Tomas. Thomas. Tomas. Tomas. Thomas is different everywhere, but I'm used to being in Hungary where it's Tomas. Balkush. All right, JK Linney tried everything there. Forcing the sacrifices. Schieberspieler, I said you were bringing the beer to the Tuesday Blitz tournament tomorrow night. Something about you sponsoring, sponsoring the, the drinks because the drinking age in Hungary is 18. That's what I heard. Just beer, though. Nothing, nothing strong. All right, guys. I'm leaving a little early today. We've got time for a couple more draws. Man, that was a weird 40 and slip. Instead of saying time for a couple more games, I just, I think because this player's name is weird draw. It, it put the word draw in my mind. S strange. That's funny. Is anybody here a subscriber to the stream that, that was challenging me? Is sit down or... Sit down. Hanish Burger. One of you guys has to be a gift sub. Yeah. The burger. Burgers make me hungry. Schieber Spieler, Palinka, a true Hungarian. We don't want to encourage you. All right. Burger. There was this. There was this billboard outside a construction, a building under construction the other day. I walked by. It was like an Irish restaurant advertisement for some Irish restaurant in Hungary in Budapest and they were like Irish menu and then had like a picture of a hamburger I was like that's weird I didn't know that hamburgers were like a traditional Irish food is that true Rossador? I don't know if Rossador is still here but I just thought that was weird you know you put up a billboard advertisement for your Irish restaurant and then there's like a big picture of like a hamburger with french fries. <laughs> I think that, I don't know, tourists must just assume it's all good.
I've been seeing a lot of A3. It's probably like an Irish restaurant run by Hungarians or something. They think that's like traditional Irish cooking. America, Ireland, whatever. It's all the same. Typical misconception. We're all Westerners to them. Bacon and cabbage. That sounds more like it. Rabbit stew. Padre Antonio is allowed. Padre Antonio, you have a funny dichotomy because you're you're half Scottish and half Italian. It's like a culinary accident. The Italian side of his family won't won't eat at the Scottish side. They have trouble when they they get together. That is seriously kind of weird. So it seems like there's some weaknesses here on the dark squares. Burger's playing this very passively. The entire setup of Bishop B2 is too passive for white. But honestly, let's see. Castles, Bishop takes B4. Well, the plan all along has been to play c5. I was watching this some TV show, I don't remember what it was, some older TV show the other day. And they made some reference to the fact that this sort of actually really typical um, misconception, I think, you know, the Hungarian food is really spicy. I mean, there are some things that are spicy, but there's a popular misconception that like, Hungarian food, like every kind of Hungarian food is like loaded with hot paprika or something, you know. That's not really true. This is interesting. E4. Bob Gouliash, I mean, it depends, you know, any kind of Gouliash can be, can be more spicy, depends on who prepares it, but it's not like spicy like Mexican food or something, or Indian food is like way spicier than typical Indian food can be way spicier than Hungarian, you know. And you can spare, and if you compare Indian food, Mexican food, and, and Hungarian food, I feel like Hungarian is the least spicy of those. We're a little off the chest subject here, but it's fun to talk about food, especially when you're hungry. Um, I didn't get enough breakfast, I guess. So what am I going to do here? We're going for the big dark square bind. I don't know about this decision if it's really correct, but I didn't like isolating my pawns. Normally I would take toward the center, but I'm concerned that the b4 pawn is a serious problem. 
Djokovic disqualified from the U.S. Open because he hit a referee with a ball. Yikes. At least he didn't hit him with a racket. Damn. That sounds like... Djokovic. He means Djokovic. Yeah. He just... Especially, yeah, Berger started it all. He started it all. That sounds like like, like Korchnoi would do. He, he was known for, like, knocking over the pieces violently. Upsetting the board. Stuff like that. Definitely happens. Marha Burger. Both sides looking for this outpost square on d4, d5. Yeah, I mean, Padre Antoni, I certainly am no expert on Indian or even Mexican food. Everything is perverted by, by other cultures and misrepresented, I'm sure. The last time I got Indian food, it was extremely spicy. I almost died. Well, what was portrayed to be Indian food? But I don't think that's the case with Hungarian food that much. You know, a few things. It doesn't typically get like brutally, devastatingly spicy. It's not necessary. Yeah, good maneuver. He's got an 83. He's going to beat me to it. Man. Putting my queen on e7 was a really dumb thing to do. Now I'm like a target for knight e3, knight f5, and knight, knight e3, knight d5. I guess f5 is the major problem here. We're going to have to play g6. This has got to be stopped. At least with d5 I can capture it, but I definitely misplayed this. But it's not fair playing against, against Heinrich Berger with that name. I've never been to India. Maybe someday. We have one player here in Hungary, Grandmaster Sebe Attila. He he plays a lot he's played a lot of tournaments in India. He really likes it. But he's also just like the most Um He's a really friendly person, but he's he's like the most active traveling player I know. He's just like constantly playing in tournaments everywhere. I think that 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 I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, we're going to change plans. Changing plans to blockade strategy. Sound the alarm. Culinary discussions.
Let's put the rook on a7, astrobate. Hanishberg are playing a very skilled positional style game here. Oh, the knight d7, man. What is this? I mean, FA, what is this thing? What is this rook, man? Rook on a7, actually not that bad. But this is good maneuver, knight d2. I screwed a completely good position here. And there goes my good blockader. Everybody knows the queen is the best blockader. Great play by Hanischberger. Rescued his somewhat dubious position. Oh my god, and he even saw that. He saw knight e6 and prevented it by playing the back rank mate with the threat of queen d1. It wasn't even necessary, and he saw it. And he even stopped that. He stopped knight g5 as well. He's a genius. 1500. Jeez. Now, I don't know about that decision. I'm not sure I like it, but sure, I'm sure white's still fine. I'm not sure I like, I like taking. Maybe h5 better. White has no risk of losing, really. I still think you're fine. You're better. Man, I got positionally outplayed. I had a great position and screwed it all up. You did a good job. From this point around move 13, I thought I was better. But right now I screw up with queen e7. Black has to be very accurate here. And it can't be queen e7, because that's a tempo. When you play knight e3, knight f5, or knight e5, you're on my queen. And putting pressure on the e4 pawn is pivotal. So the engine is pointing out like rook a5, rook a7, queen e8. I have to be accurate here. But this goes back to what I was talking about, about with, with, um, with princess chess, about closed positions. Maneuvering, strategy, Long-term plans, they're very difficult to exercise in in blitz chess. In a matter of moves, I lost all my advantage here, and white was fine or even better, and he did a good job. All right, guys, um, I have time for like one more five plus three game, and then I gotta run. Is anyone else a subscriber to the stream that's challenging me? This is a new player. Drack of Fire, sit down. Either of you a subscriber? I never heard of anyone eating beaver. It's a good thing that Bob isn't here. But I suppose, you know. Yours ran out. Alright, we'll take this challenge from Ivanik. That's the last one for today. I gotta go, guys. I gotta go a little early today. Important appointment. I will I will post a blitz tournament for our team tomorrow night six thirty C E S T tournament actually starts at six forty five please join us the Reti or Catalan the Catalan Beaver Tail Stew B six is not a great move for Black there we transpose some kind of slightly inferior Queen's Indian. But it's still okay. It's still completely playable for black. This is actually a Queen's Indian and a Catalan, I guess. I find it very difficult to get an edge with white against this. I don't even know like what you're supposed to do. It looks good, 
but then I never find any way to get anything. Princess chess, the closed positions are good for your good for your strategic chess. They don't allow you to benefit from your your tactical ability to the to the utmost. So ninety five, ninety four. This is frustrating, man. I mean I get this all the time. I don't know. Like how do you get an advantage against this D five Queens Indian Schieber Spieler? I wish somebody would teach me. I lost a similar game against Robert Tormo with Black back in like November when I came back from the United States. I dropped my hanging pawn on d5. I hate hanging pawns actually with Black too. It was something very, very similar to this. But I think my knight may have been on d7. Happy Labor Day. Celebration of work. Bishop h3. Hmm. Then you can, like, take on e5. Rook c8 is a bit weird. I have a queen a4. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Tomorrow... You mean Thursday? You mean like playing it in the tournament? Rook c8, bishop h3. Am I winning a pawn here? What? Knight takes d5, knight takes e5. Knight takes e7 check. Queen e7. Bishop takes b7. It's late in the stream. Isn't our lecture tomorrow? Tomorrow? I thought that was Princess Chess talking to me. I'm sorry, you're both pink, Padre and Tony, and you both started with P. I thought Princess Chess was talking about the Thursday subscriber stream, and her her comment was right before yours, so I thought you were the same person. Tomorrow is both that and the yes. The answer is yes. But it was not Princess who was talking to me about Thursday's stream. It was Padre and Tony. Yeah, we have to go over your tournament games. Deep calculations. All right, guys, I got to run. It was great hanging out with you, talking about food. Rook D8 now. I guess Rook D8 doesn't really change the situation. I stole a pawn. Well, that's got to be saved. Bad bishop. I need the Fianchetto bishop to protect my king. The other one can go. Waits off and giving up that Catalan c1 bishop. Yeah, it seems like there's all sorts of ways to reach this variation. Queen's Indian, Catalan, like this. This was a wasn't even a proper Catalan. I've seen even others. Queen's Gambit declined, probably. Can reach it too. It's just like a kind of tab tabia position. Kind of like the IQP or something. 
when I was starting out in chess in the 80s, Karpov played some games with like the d5, Queen's Indian, with everybody. Everybody kind of looked down on it like it was bad, and I always just assumed it was bad, but it doesn't seem like it's that bad. It's just hard to play. Um, it's hard to play hanging pawn positions. So people are just generally lazy. I mean, it's very similar to the IQP, or isolated queen pawn positions. It's easier to just say, oh, well, isolated pawns are bad, you know, never play those. But the truth is that it's just hard work. Bashikim Rose. Cheers. Thanks, Schieberspieler, for welcoming the new player to the stream. I think that people are just afraid of thinking and hard work. Mastering those kind of positions with with dynamic pawn structures, like isolated pawns, hanging pawns. I'm as guilty as the next person. Not so much with the isolated pawn, but I'm very guilty of of not um, not working hard enough in my IQP. I'm sorry, my hanging pawn games. So here we have an interesting position: Queen C5. That's not going to work. Rook D8, Rook D8, Queen C5. That's not going to work. And a nice plan by Ivanic here for Black with Queen H4. Am I threatening rook d8? Not really. Black can just take back with the queen, for example. Mastering Schieberspieler. Guys, join us for the Blitz Tournament tomorrow night, sponsored by Schieberspieler. He's bringing the beer. So seriously, what am I doing here? B4. Maybe b4 is a good move anyway. I am a little concerned about knight f5. That's a great plan. That is a great plan. If I try to win a pawn here, it's a little greedy, but, but plausible. I just don't like being greedy. Knight f5 is strong, though. The anti knight f5 move. Yep. This messes with him a little bit. Queen centralization. Queen trades are always good, especially when we're up material. I was very concerned about like knight f5, queen h4, knight h4, queen g6, all that stuff. A lot of counterplay. So we want to kind of mess with that. That was a good plan by him, though. Knight h6 looks stupid, but it's not stupid. He's coming to this square, possibly to d4, h4. It's actually a good maneuver. It's a little slow, but generally a good plan for black to try to get counterplay. His knight was doing nothing on f6 anyway. Now, but the queen trade is very bad for black. And knight f5, I can stop that with e3. I'm not sure if I need to play it right away. Maybe I have better. And rook d7 is really strong, actually. Sometimes I'm just not aggressive enough. And I think we have a tendency to do that when we're better. To be on the safe side is my first instinct. But e3 is, 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 is a really passive move. This is much stronger. I do play the Queen's Gambit. You mean, well, with white. I mean, I play it, yeah, the Queen's Gambit from the white perspective. I haven't played it much with black. The last time I played it with black was a draw against Sultan Ribley. I surprised him. He surprised me. Ripley like normally played like the white side of the Queen's Indian and stuff. We had a team game, and uh, this was like ten years ago. I expected him to play like a Queen's Indian, and he played Knight C3. I was like, oh my god, he's like prepared for the Nimzo. So I I just like played the Queen's Gambit. I was totally.
terrified playing against the former 2600 player, but I managed to hold. That was literally my last Queen's Gambit. It was probably like nine years ago, eight or nine years ago, in a Hungarian team championship with black. With white, I played the Queen's Gambit a lot. Anyway, the knight is trapped by bishop c4 and, and rook d1. Game over. All right, guys. I got to go. We're leaving a little early today, so I'm going to have to decline your challenges. Thanks for playing and tuning in. We're going to be back tomorrow night with our Blitz tournament. 6.30 CEST. Thanks for playing. See you tomorrow night. And thanks for supporting the stream. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't forget to bring the beer. Bye-bye.